Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sea channel, thank you very much for tuning in. And over here in the Northern Hemisphere it is both cold, it's winter and the uh, weather is abysmal. <laughs> so perfect weather to do an indoors review of the content of this here box from Speedbee. This box contains a, a flight controller. Guess what, I'm going to take everything out of this box and we'll see what we have here. Okay, this is what I found in the box, the flight controller, and details look in a second. I found me some mounting hardware and a connector cable in case you want to run this, um, this flight controller into a 4-in-1 ESC. You need that cable over here, you've got some connectors, different connectors, and some plastic standoffs to mount the flight controller. And uh, did I mention the silicone washers, anti-vibration grommets, that's always nice to have. We also get an XT60 with a wire, that's very nice. And the last thing in the box was this card. Now um, you see a QR code over here and from that QR code you can install the SpeedyB app with which you can actually configure this flight controller. See it does have a USB port over here but you can also connect to it wirelessly with your phone and that's very convenient I have to say. Yes you can do basically the same with an on the go USB cable with your phone but but not having a wire between your quadcopter or airplane maybe that, that USB port isn't even accessible in your airplane. The wireless connection with your uh, phone to the flight controller is definitely convenient. I have a good number of quadcopters with Bluetooth um, enabled flight controllers and I must say that's uh, very convenient. Ok, getting back to the accessibility of our connectors, I also see telemetry connectors over here on every corner, that's the R5, so you'll be using uh, UART5 if you want to use telemetry for your ESCs. And yeah, on most modern ESCs, if you'd want to use this flight controller in a multi-rotor, you'd be running telemetry, I'd say. Otherwise you can't use RPM filtering, and in case you don't know what that is, uh, well, that's a, a modern way of filtering out vibrations, and you definitely want to be using that. The tuning of your multi-rotor will work out a lot better if you run telemetry. So again, it's nice to see connector ports easily accessible right near the connector pads for your ESCs. Over here I see a VI, which means a video in. So they mean to uh, for you to hook up your camera over here. Over here I see a VO, so that's for your video out or your connector to the VTX over here in this block. And let me see, I also see a T4 over here, and an R4, but the T4 you'll probably be using for your smart audio. So that's another UART used there. T4 used uh, for your uh, VTX and uh, 5 for your uh, telemetry for your ESCs. Let me see, what more can I uh, tell you? Over here I see some connectors for your GPS and yeah, on the other side we also see that white connector. At the start of the video I showed you this cable over here, right? So from this white connector you could run a cable, a, a single cable, this cable, to your 4-in-1 ESC. But to be perfectly honest I don't see a lot of people using that. Again you'd have a 4-in-1 ESC that also has tabs for a, a LiPo. Um, it's, that's simply not an optimal way of doing things. A flight controller like this you'd be running with separate ESCs, in my humble opinion. Over here we've got a shunt resistor which means that this PDB has an amp sensor. And over here you see two coils, uh, basically BECs. Yeah, that's not, not completely correct, but these two coils will make this PDB have a 5 volt out and a 9 volt out. And yes, that means that this uh, PDB does not have a 3.3 volt out. 
for instance, if you want to run Spectrum uh, receivers. In fact, the F4 version of this flight controller does have a 3.3. So if you are running Spectrum, you might want to take a second look at that F4 version. Again, there's a link in the description to that F4 version as well. And uh, yeah, apart from that, there's a lot of electronics and I'm no electronics expert. I could tell you all kinds of things. I know that this over here is a chip that um, manages your OSD. And over here I do see something important, it's very small I have to say, but this is the barometer over here. That's actually one of the reasons why I got this flight controller. I want to use it in an airplane and in an airplane uh, a rudimentary sort of altitude hold can be very useful. So that's where that uh, barometer comes in. Let's see, anything else at the bottom? Yeah, over here you see some basically back off parts for your signal 1, 2, 3 and 4 and battery power, so basically the input power and ground and current and TTL. Basically those are backup ports for what you can do with this connector in case that connector doesn't work out for you for whatever reason or if it's broken. Over here we see an RSSI, that's a bit inconvenient maybe. On the other hand, RSSI is mm, well mostly included uh, with the, in one of the signals of your receiver these days, but still, if you'd want to use it, well, you'd have to solder up a wire to that prior to installing the flight controller itself, I guess. And SP, to be perfectly honest, SP? I'm not sure what an SP port, I've come across them before, I've never used them, maybe you can tell me what an SP port would be for. I did do uh, some googling but I didn't really come up with a conclusive answer for that. Oh well. Again, you tell me what you think SP is for. Maybe you've used that port. And uh, let me see, uh, yeah, this flight controller has only one sensor, one uh, gyro, so no dual gyro setup in this one. And um, yeah, F7 flight controller, and uh, USB port is a normal micro USB, so no USB C, which, well, it kind of should have been <laughs> in 2020. I don't uh, see why we are still using micro USB ports. Uh, oh well. Okay, so again, I got me this flight controller for an airplane. Obviously you can use them for multi-rotors, but I wouldn't use them in anything other than multi-rotors with separate ESCs, which maybe uh, you want to build a multi-rotor like that. And between the F4 and the F7, in most cases the F4 will still suffice, however if you want to hook up some peripherals you will uh, quickly run out of UART COM ports on the F4 version. So again if you plan to hook up things I go for the F7 version. It is a little more expensive but it's uh, well approximately 15 euros and what's 15 euros on the total price of a multi-rotor. So but still. Uh, that's up to you. If you want a basic, simple PDB plus flight controller, the F4 will pro probably suffice as well. And that's my first look at this flight controller. If you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.